McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode number 26 of this NHL 21 Edmonton Oilers franchise mode here in oil country. If you guys missed any of the last episodes leading up to this point, go up into that top corner of the video right now. There will be a card that sends you to the link of the entire playlist. You can catch up on whatever you've missed so far. Also, if you do enjoy this video, make sure that you go down below, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps YouTube algorithm out. Also, feel free to subscribe. If you haven't already, we're on our way to 1,100 subs, and I know you guys can hit that. And also feel free to leave comments to possibly get featured, and don't forget to turn on notifications. So guys, last episode, we were eliminated by the Portland Pylons in round two. So that means we are going to have a slightly higher pick here heading into the draft. I've got all my draft interviews and everything picked out already. We're good to go. So I need to show you guys the shortlist, I believe... I've got a short list set up here for players that we're looking at. Uh, quite a few interesting ones for sure. Um, my main target here actually is Javon Tuzolino. If we can somehow trade up, he would be an awesome pick. And as you can see in here, we have quite a few guys that I am interested in. So um, these are hopefully going to be all the picks that we try to land. Um, I've lined them up with our current picks already for the most part, and uh, we're going to see how it goes. So let's get into this, guys. So guys, by the looks of it, uh, the Islanders are the only team willing to trade a pick in the top 10. So since that pick is on the trade block, we are going to try and make a move for it. So let's see. I think we want to go with... Um, I want to say Pugliarvi because he's in our bottom six. Um, yeah, Pugliarvi would be our best bet here, I would say. So if we could offer Pugliarvi, um, who else would be a good offering piece here? Um, Ola Moden, possibly. Yeah, I think we could use Ola Moden. And then... I'm thinking a draft pick, like possibly our first rounder next year. Is that possible? Like, will that go through? Oh no, we need to grab somebody off of their uh, off of their expiring deals here. They do have a lot of bigger contracts too. So I'm thinking like a Zaboral maybe might be a decent pickup. Yeah, let's let's try Zaboral. And does that go through? No, it does not. Okay. Instead of a first rounder next year, let's try. Uh, let's try going with strong and then a second rounder next year. Does that go through? Trade accepted. Let's go. Okay. So there we go. We get Zaboral and a second overall pick. Um, so the second top two pick that we land within the span of four years the last guy we landed that high was William Eves so he should definitely be a uh this or the guy that we're going to draft here should definitely be a good player either way um besides that here I just want to show you guys where our other picks are landing so we currently own picks number 2 25 57 72 89 153, 185, and 217. So those are the picks that we are going to hold on to here. And uh, that Islanders pick should pan out pretty well for us, hopefully as long as we pick the right guy. So the first pick, obviously Rick McMillan, only 79 overall, but still a top-end defender. He is absolutely huge, 6'4", 203, and 79 overall. Pretty nice defenseman there, I would say. Even though we could go for a guy like Marshall Reitz, who's, you know, Listed number one by our scouts or Dimitrakos or somebody like that. The guy I want to go with, like I've said, is Javon Tuzolino. Mainly because, one, he scored 62 points in 72 games in the OHL. He does lack size, but great puck mover, shutdown ability, slap shot, or heavy slap shot, 
and the offensive side that is the big thing on elite defensemen here so and you look at the grades too two a pluses two a's an a minus and a b i would say he's better rounded than just about anybody else except for obviously reitz and i don't want to take another two way forward so let's go with javon tuzolino and he is also 79 overall nice that is a good pickup i would say he will be in our top six this upcoming season no question about that really and uh let's sim to pick number 25 now so oh grossman got picked okay so i had him on my list but by the looks of it he has already been picked up um lots of really solid picks here by the looks of it gagnon was nice oh oh Jaden brennan was an 80 overall but he fell to pick six as carpenter is picked by the blackhawks there Reitz was 81 overall, and Dimitrakos was not as good. All right. Shoot. Um, So we could go with a guy like Cohen, or I had another guy pinned here, guys, that I was actually super interested in. I mean, Tanabe, guaranteed low elite, but I was more interested in this guy, Russ Ribeiro. One-year ETA. Quite a few A's and B's throughout there, and 6'3 at just 17 years old, also put up 56 points. I'm going to take him way off the board, and I know you guys might think it's a stupid pick, but if he is a low elite, oh my god. Come on, baby. Let's go. Holy crap. 75 overall. Russ Ribeiro. <laughs> Oh my goodness, talk about first round steals, baby. Not even steals, just amazing draft picks. Like, that is just, that is fantastic. He's going to play another year in junior, most likely, at 75 overall, but my goodness, that is a gorgeous pick. So let's see who else we missed out on. McFarland was elite. Quite a few medium top sixes in here. That's no surprise. Um, Tanabe was 61 overall, so we definitely made the right pick there. Oh, Montador and Svoboda. Svoboda, yeah, that's how you'd say it. Um, also, low elites. Anybody else that was really good right after? Um, oh, Cohen was... I mean, he was defensive, but... Yeah, Darren Cohen was a medium elite, but I really like Ribeiro. And I think he could potentially grow into a medium elite anyways at that rating. Like, he, he looks fantastic. So, I'm really excited for Russ Ribeiro. Um, Erzberg was also a medium elite. Okay, so the next guy I have on my list here for who I'm looking at would be Fabian Carcillo. Let's see if he turns out. We haven't, yeah, we haven't picked a left winger yet. So, Carcillo is, okay, okay, not bad, um, low elite 2A forward, 18 years old, um, 63 overall, I'll take it, like, that's a pretty good second round pick still, and he could develop into something special if, um, if his development goes well, so, besides that, McCarron was a nice pick, Jenner was a nice pick, um, who else was actually good in here? Uh, Cahill was a medium top four, medium top, top six for Shoten. And, ooh, Jackamobs, but he was 19. Okay, so that one doesn't exactly disappoint me, even though we did just trade away Kenny Strong. But, um, oh, who do I want to take? I kind of want to take Prohorkin, but honestly, I don't know. Um... I have Findlay pinned here. Yeah, screw it. Let's take Kelly Findlay. And he is a... Okay, 62 rated, low top six sniper. Um, not a bad center for the third round, but again, could have been a better pick for sure. Let's see who else was even available in here. So, um, not off to as great a start as the last couple rounds. Round three kind of taking a hit. And all those guys, yeah, were low top sixes, so it didn't really matter. Um, so for the next pick, I had somebody pinned. Oh, yeah, Stepniak. So we're going to take a look at, oh, again, another Kelly. So we draft Kelly, um, what was it? Kelly Findlay, and then Kelly Stepniak, back-to-back -back picks. Nice. Okay. So 
Stepniak, okay, 63 rated, low top four defenseman. Not terrible. Again, 18 years old, so I'm pretty happy with that again. Um, medium starter in Combs. Not much else here in round five. Uh, Novikov was decent for Chicago. And really, that was kind of it. Round four was a bit of a bust. Not a lot overall. Holy jeez. Okay. Yeah, Radulov was kind of like... Radulov and Stajan were the only good picks, really, in that round for round five. So that kind of stinks. Um, For our next pick, we are going to go with... I had guys pinned here. Um, I guess Prince. Okay, let's take Marcos Prince. See if he turns out. And, oh, okay. So he is actually a low elite. I wasn't expecting him to be. He is 19 years old already, though. So that is not spectacular. He is the oldest player we have taken in this draft so far. Um, but he is a playmaker. He does have mild potential to actually make the league at some point. Unlikely, but um, you never know. Unlikely potential is never exactly bad potential. But by the looks of it, yeah, by the looks of it, we got a pretty good pick there. So, yeah, no other low elites in that whole round except for Marcos Prince. So, yeah, I'll take it. That's a great pick overall. Um... I had other guys pinned here. I don't know exactly why. Um, they're back-to-back -back players, too. So I'll take Zubov. I have no idea if he's going to be good or not, but let's send it. Dmitry Zubov. Okay. 51-rated low elite defensive defenseman. He's huge. 63206 and right handed, so he could actually pair very nicely in the future with uh, Javon Tuzolino if he can actually grow properly. But that is the whole question is can he actually grow? All right, and then let's get to pick 217. Um, yeah, not much here. Holy crap, this is weak. This is a weak end to the draft. Usually, there's a couple late round steals. But it really doesn't look like it today. Yeah, Zua was kind of like one of the only good picks. Um, I don't want to take a 20-year-old. I could take Salmonen. Or I could take... Nah, I'm going to take Salmonen. I have no idea if he's good or not. Okay, uh... No, he's not really good, but medium top nine grinder. In the seventh round, you can't really complain about that. So, yeah, we'll take it. And I just want to see who these last couple picks turn out to be because there are only a couple. But um, let's see. Moran was terrible. Mackinnon was terrible. Or Malnavara was not good either. And the last pick of the draft is a medium top six in Yoshimura. So... Not a terrible draft. I'm really happy with our top couple picks, especially Tuzolino, Ribeiro, and Carcillo. Those guys all definitely have NHL potential. And then after that, you know, it's a bit of a crapshoot, but who really cares? Like, we got three big-name players to add to an already good Oilers team here. And they're going to be on ELCs, which is huge as far as team cap space goes here moving forward. Three days later. So guys, we are now going to hit the re-sign phase of this video. As you can see, I'm wearing a different uh, shirt, hoodie, whatever you want to call it. And you can also see a new background behind me. Uh, forgive the lighting. It's going to be a little bad here for the next video or two until I actually get some curtains in this room. Um, currently, kind of this whole face of the room over here is just absolute windows. So... Yeah, um, the curtains will be appreciated eventually, but for now, we'll make do with what we have, and uh, let's get into the resign phase. So, we've got a couple big-name players coming up here as far as William Eaves, Kyler Yamamoto go. Those are kind of the main names we have to pay attention to. Uh, got a crap ton of scouts here that I'm just going to skip through for the most part, but uh, get ready for some signings. All right, guys, so here's how our contract situation looks. 
Um, like I said, William Eves, Kyle Yamamoto, kind of the two main names there. The guys I want to point out to you for big money and versus age, really, it would be Jakob Vrana, 31 years old, and getting paid $8.5 million as not the most spectacular player on this team. And then the other one, 80-rated Raphael Lavoie, 26, making $4 million. A little too much in my books. And, uh, you know, he did have that one pretty fantastic season where he put up like 50 points. And uh, really, that was it. That was what we paid him on, and that was a mistake. So, yeah, Lavoie probably going to be on his way out, I would assume. But we're going to go by position here. Uh, we'll start off with the centers because those are kind of going to be one of the more main concerns here. Um, we're going to use the rule of 85 on the majority of this. So 1.65 million times recall one is going to be about 1.425 million for Bratislav Budai. Not a bad signing. I'm going to sign John Beach, but I'm not going to sign McLeod or Kara because we have Bell, Chistov, I want to sign Hancock, and I also want to sign Matsumoto. Those guys all have some pretty decent potential here in the team moving forward. As far as left-wingers go, we got lots of guys who potentially could make the NHL here, such as Ottoson, Andreoff, and Spencer. Those guys I'm looking forward to, but I'm not going to guarantee that they make the league. We just got to hope and pray that they do. And, you know, they might, but they might not as well. It's kind of hard to tell. With some of these guys, uh, we're not going to sign Typolis because we caught enough left and right wingers in here. Um, as far as the right side goes, William Eves going to get qualified just for now. Um, we are going to make some moves. Kyler Yamamoto, I'm going to offer him 9 point... Let's try 9.25 to start. And uh, if he doesn't sign it, then we will go with a little bit more money. Um, Nick Merkley, 1.675 million times 85 percent is looking at a 1.45 million dollar contract about or 1.425 sorry uh coopland we will offer an extension to same with pavel novak and same with ribero we're going to offer him his elc even though he's probably going to play another year in everett that's what i actually want to see is that he uh, grows a little bit more just based on where he's at in his career right now. Um, I'm pretty happy overall, though, with how this team is starting to shape up. Um, all right, for defense, this is where we run into some interesting topics as far as not signing top six players, um, but instead going for the rookie defenseman and letting other guys walk. Obviously, we have Goldobin, Coburn, Volu, and even Mann is getting close. They're all 21 years old. Did we get most of these guys? Let's see. We got, okay, I got to go way back here. Okay, so we got 2023 Goldobin, 2023 Coburn, undrafted Volu, and 2025 Clifford Mann. Okay, 2023 Thomas Josephson too, and he went way before a bunch of those other guys too, which is kind of funny. All right, so that's where we're going to leave it for now. We are going to offer Jan Bednar a contract extension. Hopefully he can actually start to play like a real goalie here. He's kind of not grown at all. And that has been a mild issue here, but, you know, 26 wins should get you somewhere in the league, and apparently it doesn't. So, yeah, a little rough there, but that's how it's been for the majority of this franchise mode. So let's advance a day. Going to be a lot of action here, and uh, we shall see what happens here moving forward. Looks like Volu, Coburn, Tizolino, Yamamoto rejects. Okay. But we get Ribeiro, Tizolino, Merkley, Beach, Matsumoto, Bednar, Novak, Robertson, Andreoff, Hancock, Budai, Kuplin, Spencer. All right, so everybody except Yamamoto quite literally signed their contract. So we're going to offer Yamo 9.5. Hopefully that's enough to entice him back and then we don't have to pay him too, too much. And come on. Yes, we got Yamo. Okay, that's good. That is very good. Um, so Yamo is back. Love to hear it, and uh, unfortunately, we aren't going to have quite enough money there. We got $5 million bucks on the dot. Um, yeah, that $5 million probably... Actually, we didn't get Merkley, so that was my bad. Um, we'll offer him a $1.5 million contract, and I would assume he signs that one, but maybe not. Um, 
Nope, okay. Fine. Just exactly what you want. There you go, Nick. Take it. Okay, so we got 4.3 million left in the budget. Not enough to sign William Eves by any means, so we are going to have to make a move. I'm looking at two different kind of options here. Um, I know, I think I know what I want to do. So, we are going to sim to free agency. Everybody should be qualified. Uh, that's supposed to be. Ty Paulus, we're letting him walk, obviously. And let's see, Audison, okay, he lost a little morale. Same with, okay, Wagner didn't sign either. Um, so Lavoie is the only guy we're actually looking to move here. So let's uh, keep him on the trade block. And I think I know what I want to do. So Raphael Lavoie, wherever he's at, um, let's just sort by overall rating here. Then we know he's going to be the only 80 on the team. Raphael Lavoie, how much value can we get for him? 39 potential trade offers. Uh, oh, fourth and a fifth there, I think. That Florida option is going to be the one we take. So I'm not seeing any other. Actually, no, there's quite a few fourth and fifths. Uh, who's going to be the worst team available here? Ottawa? I would assume it's Ottawa. But maybe. Maybe Philadelphia. Maybe a bunch of teams. Um. Never mind, Philly looks pretty decent. Okay, instead of that, um, where's my guy? Oh, come on, he's way down the list, of course. Okay, instead of that, let's try Rangers. Are the Rangers going to be the worst here? They very well could be, um, and if they are, we'll take it, but eh, debatable. Debatable if they're the worst team here. How's their goaltending? Their goaltending's good. We don't take it. Eh, shit, their goaltending is good. Okay, who is the other team? Ottawa. Ottawa's got below average goaltending, and how's their team looking? Not terrible, honestly. Like, they got some pretty decent players in here, but... Um, I would say, yes, they're probably the worst team available. So let's go with... God, they have a lot of fifth-round picks. Holy crap. Let's go with a fourth and a fifth there. I'll take it. All right, trade accepted. There you go. So they splurge for four million bucks there and we still don't have enough money which is a big ouch at the moment but i am going to try and propose another trade here so the other team i want to go with i hit back by accident the other team i want to make a deal with here <laughs> we just made a deal with and i'm kicking myself for it because i could have done so much better here but uh, let's try going with, I don't want Cheka, I want Pulley Harvey, because we know he fits, and I want our second round pick back. In exchange for left winger Jakob Vrana. What? You're kidding me, right? Seriously? We have to take on somebody else? Oh, baby. They got 1.6 million bucks. They can't afford it. Ouch. Okay. I take Darcy Moreau's instead of the second. Would that work? They're still over the salary cap. What do you mean? Bro. What? Like, come on, man. Ah, oh, this is a pain in the ass now. Okay, I want Pugliarvi. 
I guess I'll take Josh Anderson. You're freaking kidding me, man. That's seven point. I'm not clearing up any fucking cap space this way. Like, are you serious? Are you freaking serious right now? This is actually pissing me off now. Okay. Oh, fuck off, you stupid fucking game. Can we go Anderson and Moroz? Is that too much? They're not going to take the trade now. Then I'm going to have to give up another pick. Okay, it did work. Thank God. I was trying to get my own pick back, and that just didn't happen. So, now we immediately have to move either Moroz or somebody along those lines. Um, Even though he looks like a sick player. Like, I would much rather hold on to... A guy like Darcy Moreau, who's a first-round pick playmaker, he would probably fit in our team somewhere. I just don't see how we're going to find a trade for Josh Anderson. That's that's the problem here. So, yeah, Anderson's going to be, like, ridiculously hard to trade. Um, even though he's not a completely terrible player. Like, he's, he's pretty decent. He's actually really looking good as far as current NHL status goes, but uh, in real life. But, oh boy, here we go. Okay. Where is Joshy boy? There he is. Okay. Any trade offer I can get for him. 39 trades, apparently. Sixth and a seventh rounder. Huh. All right, I'll take a fifth and a sixth from Florida then. That is going to be the option here. So, thank you very much, Florida. Clear up $3.1 in cap for me. And now I can actually go and sign my player. Um, so, we fill out a little little hole there with LeBois. And as far as uh, Darcy Moroz, or Moroz, is that how you say it? Darcy Moroz? 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 I don't know how you say it. Um,. Nine million bucks for the next eight years, William Eves. He's gonna take it, is he not? We shall find out here right away. Um, we only have ten million bucks, so here we go. Let's see what happens. This is gonna be a little bit scary if he doesn't sign, because we know he's gonna want money. Come on, let's go. Okay, so we get William Eves. I would say the team is honestly in really good shape right now. Um. Let's just take a quick peek at the whole lineup here. So that looks really good as far as centers go. McDavid drops off a little bit. Um, left wingers, that's that's it. Okay. Um, we got Pugliarvi, though, who's going to move over. Possibly Thompson and possibly Merkley, too. So there's lots of options here. I like where we're at right now. Bring in another young guy in Darcy Marat. Morose, Darcy Morose, that's how you say it. I just can't pronounce anything, apparently. Um, so, yeah, that looks good. Defense looks absolutely fantastic right now. I'm really excited to see what they can do moving forward. And goaltending, same old, same old. Looks really good. So, I think the team's set up for more success here, but I said that last season and we got bounced pretty early in the second round. So,. Yeah, let's uh, let's get to the next season and just check out how the lineup shapes up. All right, guys. So just before I show you the lineups, I'm going to make a move or two here as far as the rosters go. We are going to be pulling Coupland and or yeah, Greg Coupland and Keith Spencer are both going to be joining the Oilers this season to actually start in the lineup. We're going to be sending Declan Andreoff and Pierre Volu. I believe it's Pierre. Is it not? Yeah, Pierre Volu gonna send those two guys down and uh, that's kind of how the lineup is gonna look so let's actually go and edit the lines now see what things are looking like so let's just swap this over to the I guess we have to do this first okay so what we are also gonna do is we're gonna take Mick Mick Nick Merkley Mick Nurkley <laughs> can't speak English apparently uh, and we're gonna swap him out for Greg Coupland um, so hopefully this lineup's going to have some crazy good chemistry because when I looked at it, they all fit the lineup really nicely and somehow we only get plus one chemistry there, which does not add up to me. That should be at least plus three. 
But it is what it is, and, um, you know, that lineup should still hopefully do pretty well. Um, as far as the defense goes, plus three on the top two pairings, and then zero on that bottom pairing, so I am a little bit worried about that. But, uh, you know, we got Merkley and Zabottle in here to aid if anything goes wrong. Uh, both very solid players in their own rights. And, well, as far as the rest of this lineup goes, we're going to toss Andre off in on the top line this season in the AHL. I guess we could go with Laliberte. Um, not a terrible player. Why don't we go like that? Swap some other things around. Um, I would prefer if Connor Bell was playing on either the top line or somewhere about there. Um... No chemistry because the two way forwards, I would assume. That works better. And Raymond Helms is probably not going to fit anywhere too well. well. Plus three for John Beach. Yes, please. Um, Beach fits everywhere except the second line. Go figure. All right, so maybe we try Matthias Ottison at center for a year. 6'5 as well. He's huge. Um, so, you know, if Ottison can grow a little bit more, put up more than 47 points this season, then he's definitely making the league next year, especially at that size. Um, so I'm excited for him. As far as the defense goes, big yikes over here. This is not looking too great. Um how did everything get so bad so quickly here? Jeez. Okay, let's switch Zadorov for Volu. That should, yep. Okay, that's better. Um, still not great, but again, it is what it is. Um, Zykov's way better than Bednar now. And so is Barkov. So bye-bye, Bednar. Um, blue is chance, 100%. So that's uh, that's got to suck, but, you know, like if you don't play up to your expectations and standards that the coaches have for you, you're not going to go anywhere. So um, let's toss. No, we can't toss Connor Bell in there. Let's instead toss Andre off. That should be the one. There we go. Okay. I don't know how Connor Bell ended up at center twice, but he did. And, uh... Instead, let's do Chistov. All right, so that's the lineup for the AHL. Again, not terrible, but not spectacular. The NHL definitely in better shape, and I am very excited to see how uh, this season goes. I do want to just check out one special teams. We got a plus five on that. Holy crap. Okay. That's pretty nice, I'd say. I'd say it's uh, that one's up there for one of the best uh, power plays we've ever had. <laughs> Um, let's see, who else could go in here? Um, oh, Morozov. Doesn't quite fit. He's very freaking close. Oh, there we go. We'll go pull Yervi there, and then Morozov gets the plus three still on that second unit. Gotta love that. Like, that is just, yeah, that is a good, good power play unit overall. No questions asked about that one. Four-man PK, not going to be as strong, but still fairly decent. Um, I guess we're just not getting a plus three anywhere. That kind of stinks, um, especially since we should get it somewhere. Uh, again, Morozov can go on the point there. He's big enough. PK, on the other hand, big question marks here. Um, lots of, lots of shaky-looking kind of scenarios here, so... Let's switch Eves out. He's not going to be the best penalty killer over a guy like uh, even Kuplin. Kuplin should be better, and he's not. Uh, okay. Nope, just no two-way forward help here, apparently. Not at center, anyways. Um, are you telling me Ati Raddy's not on the PK? Intelligent. Like, that's real intelligent, guys. Okay. And then this is only a minus one because we have, yeah, we have two offensive defensemen. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. 
All right, so those PKs are looking half decent, I guess you could say. Um, it's still not the most spectacular, but it is what it is, and uh, we're working on it. So <laughs> I think that's as good as we're going to get it. I mean, I will toss Budai in here unless it goes to minus three, which it does. Okay. So Keith Spencer is going to be playing center, which is a bit dicey, but that's okay. Um, so that's our special teams. This team is very much offensively inclined. No real question about that. And uh, we will see that shine through more as the season goes on. But yeah, this uh, this is looking really good. I just want to double check the power play here one more time. Okay, righty's taking shots from where they should be. Almost. Swap those two. There we go. Okay. Righty, righty. Righty, righty. Okay, we got a lot of righties, which is actually good. So, yeah, that's the team. I know I dragged that on a little bit, but it's okay, guys, because we are just going to sim to the regular season here nice and quick. Um, the hang game trial warranted on Javon Tizzolino. No question about that. I think he should play the whole year in the NHL, but... All right, fine, fine. You got me. You got me. We will, we'll let him play. Like, it's it's fine. So, yes, okay, he can play the first nine games of the season. <sighs> then we'll go from there. Okay, yeah, all these coach conversations. Anyways, I just want to see the draft class, see what's available here coming up because we do have Tuzolino as more of a trade piece, I would say. That's probably what we're looking at here. So, um, yeah. As far as budgets go, we do want to spend the majority on arena operations. I hate promotions, so we're going to do this. Four million bucks, same with advertising. Don't want to spend too, too much on that. Rather just max out the arena, and there we go. Save that budget. All right, guys, so just to end off this video, here's a quick peek at the draft class. And we got an unknown there. Obviously, going to be a playmaker or a sniper there in uh, Tristan Guerrero. LaCosta looking like a two-way forward, most likely. Uh, Zeeler also a two-way forward. And Kovach looking like he's going to be a two-way defenseman, most likely. I'm not sure still on Vincent Guit. Um, I'm intrigued by him, mainly based on the fact that he could be an interesting pickup. Gordy Sanford, same kind of situation here. Apparently, we're going to rank real high uh, as far as draft picks go this year. I don't know. But that is, uh, that's just kind of a quick peek at the draft class there to start. Anyways, that is where we're going to be wrapping it up. Uh, this Oilers team's looking fantastic up to this point, and I think we got a good shot at going somewhere this year with this team. So, anyways. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go down below, drop a thumbs up on the video. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're trying to hit 1,100 subs by the end of January. I know you guys can hit that. Also, feel free to drop comments to possibly get featured. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to never miss a video. But that's going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out. And see ya. Yeah. Yeah.